Hello everyone and welcome to our Friday afternoon habit. We have Chakra Chat and of course, once again, we would like to greet everyone. Happy Fiesta Mga Higala! So last week, we talked about the importance of financial planning and we have emphasized the importance of mind setting and being more aware of our goals. We also talked about the importance of, you know, surrounding yourself with people who can help you attract positive energy so that you too would be able to be positive in reaching your goals as well. But today's episode is different yet interesting, still interesting at the same time, since we are going to talk about mindfulness and events. No? So last night, though, we have witnessed uh, an event, uh, how events uh, evolved no, in the midst of this pandemic. And we were able to witness an online event as part of this year's Higalai Festival, which is the Miss Cagayan de Oro or Miss CDO Coronation Night. No, so, you know, I think that events are very important no, because it adds color to the usual routine of people. And um, it's very interesting to talk about events as of this moment, especially because of the pandemic, you know, how ev the, the events industry evolved and uh, also the lives of people who are working in this industry. But before I introduce our guest for today, uh, we would just like to continue to invite you, mga higala, for our events, no? Our ongoing events. So today we have, uh, at this point, we have our chakra chat session, and then at three thirty we'll we'll have kalihukan with Echo at five p.m. We of course have pakulay with me. It's a restorative uh, yoga session. Uh, by six thirty, we will be having a special guest uh, through uh, teacher Sheila. And then at uh, at 7.45, we have uh, Yin Yoga or Panghiwati with Teacher Dads. And of course, we will cap this Higala Yoga event with Pagayo Ukalinao with um, Teacher Echo. So it's a sound bath and yoga nidra session with Echo. And I, would, I have the honor to introduce our uh, guest for this afternoon. So our guest for this afternoon has been part of various events. No? Their recent stint in Hakbang Philippines is a testament of you know, how events can still, uh, can still thrive during these challenging times. In our upcoming episode, in this episode, we are excited to explore some of the challenges and the rewards in the events industry and how in, in, the, in their fast-paced and dynamic processes behind the scenes and on stage, they were still able to find time for themselves, diba? The events industry seems to be a very dynamic, um, you know, uh, workplace though, and very fast-paced in a sense. At least that's how I imagine it. But we are very lucky to have uh, our guests for today so that we could understand them, you know, and what do they do and how do they still find time for themselves. So our guests for today are Owen and Jerome. Jerome is uh, part of the work, workforce of RTA Lead of Con Concentrics Davao. He is a Davao Post Ambassador, a social media influencer, and a YouTuber. While Owen has been um, conceptualizing, directing, and executing events in Butuan City in Caraga region. And as a theater and multimedia artist for more than 20 years, he incorporates his aesthetics and theater production background and experience into his work. So, mga higala, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Jerome and Hi. Owen. Hi, guys. Hi, Marong Hapon. Marong Hapon. This is so nice. You're on the other side of StreamYard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, salamat kid kaayo for uh, joining us in today's episode on mindfulness and events. No? So, how are you guys? Oh, um... Can I go first? Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I, um, we're actually also excited because we're also creating digital events. Uh, we're continuing to create dig digital events. And we also have a regular um, show. Jerome and I are part of a regular show called um, COVID Conversations Over Coffee. And it happens uh, every Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's something that we are you know, looking forward to every week. So medyo pumped up din kami. Kahit, um, 
we are you know not doing live events uh you know face to face or on ground events but we're still kind of busy naman din so okay lang naman Sige. thank you Jerome. very much Owen. how about you Jerome how are you I'm really good and I'm excited it's new to me and new to Owen uh sa show kasi namin sa CCC uh, we're used to interview people but this time we are the guest and <laughs> We were so shocked. We were not able to see a lot of people on the stream yard. We can only see our face down there, but we're so excited and we're still pumped and ready for for this event. You know, thank you so much for having us, basically. And we would love to, um, you know, go on with the conversation. And <laughs> I'm really, really excited. <laughs> like, you, sige, sige. Now, so the both of you have been working together at perhaps individually in various events, no? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. interested to know what led you in being part of the events industry and how does your journey look like to be part of this particular industry? Perhaps we can start with uh, Jero. Um, dito sa Davao, um, I'm working here as freelance events host. So they name me as Dava Host Ambassador because I get to host an event and I get to host um, concerts, uh, opening of malls, um, opening of uh, Christmas tree. Um, I've been working with a lot of uh, malls here in Davao City. Um, I can name it like NCCC Mall Davao, SM Lana Premier, SM City Davao, Abriza Mall, G Mall Davao, Tagum Digos, NCCC Tagum, and Digos as well. So basically, um, it's more on that. And then aside from that, um, I also work with um, different organizers because I'm hosting weddings, debuts, uh, 50 year anniversary, Christmas party, opening, and something um, ballroom ng ano, JS prop ng mga schools, and a lot more concerts here in uh, uh, in Davao. And then, um, due to pandemic nga, medyo sad kasi tawag nito, nawalan kami ng, ng, birth, uh, ng, ng live events. Like, we nami miss ko yung tao sa mall alam mo yun nami miss ko yung tao sa wedding nami miss ko yung tao sa sa debut and good thing that we have hakbang Pilipinas during covid na buo siya and then we're still able to continue our you know our expertise our craft um i thought nga dito sa ano sa na na naimbitahan na, ako ni Owen dito sa hakbang na jero mag host ka ng event ha? are you up for virtual event sabi ko yes go go pero at the end of the day um mas more pala yung must na uplift yung skills ko so it's not basically more on hosting a virtual event but more on managing the program mm -hmm. how the program works and everything so happy naman sige salamat uh, Jerogo and uh, <laughs> the the event that you have in Hakbang no it has been very has had a tremendous success so congratulations to the both of you, you how thank about you. how about you Owen how did you start with uh, oh. the event? actually i started hosting when i was 7 years old um, I started with yung mga sa classroom, classroom lang naman. And then eventually when, you know, you you elevate to medyo sa whole school na, and then your classmates see you. And then when they, it started when they started turning 18, di ba? So they asked me, can you can you host my tribu? So sabi ko, okay, but of course, wala pa yung bayad. And then, you know, family members will see and they like the the way I host siguro. So they say, okay, can I, can I ask how much are your rates? At that day, I don't know how to rate myself pa. Kahit parang pro bono, okay lang, basta makahost. So that was parang my experience. And then eventually, I, like Jerome, I hosted weddings, mga social events, then corporate events, uh, mga pageants, mga concerts. And there, I, I started to, to hone the craft. And then actually, I stopped na um, really doing actively, doing events mga two years ago. Um, pa, ano na lang, once in a while, kanang kung naalay magkuha because I was already concentrating on the business side of events. So wala na ako sa on stage. Pero kung kailangan or requested by a client, I do it. Pero kung dili na, I, I do backstage work na, production work, or management of an event. Wala na kayo ko host Except now, nga nipalik me with Jerome, we do hosting yeah. now. Uh, digital naman, oh, which is also different. I'm interested, Owen, uh, what led you to be on the backstage now before the, you're always at the forefront, hosting, etc. What led you now to focus on the backstage? Um, being in front of an audience, it has a different kind of feel, diba? Na parang you get pumped up seeing a lot of people reacting to what you say or what, to what you do. But at the same time, I was also very curious as to how an event is run. Like, um, diba? That's also a different kind of feeling. And I felt like I'm already getting old because I am old. I I, um, I wanted to also give the stage to younger generations, like 
generational as Jerome. So I said, uh, maybe we can also develop other people to do the same kind of skill. And I was already also doing workshops on public speaking and, and, and hosting because I also want to nurture young people and say, it's also now your time to go on stage and ako naman backstage. So I stepped back, but at the same time, iba din yung experience and level of excitement. Yeah. Sige. Uh, I, I know that uh, some of you have already mentioned this uh, no? but to, uh, with the recent uh, situation because of the pandemic, I'm quite sure that the events industry have also been affected. No, How did you cope with, with it and what are your course of action in order for you to bounce back from this situation? Perhaps we could start with Poet. Ah, okay. Um, for me, I was in denial at first that this is going to happen for a long time. So um, although I closed our business, 9,000 events, um, my business partner and I, uh, Novi, we decided maybe we should temporarily close it uh, from March to June, thinking that it will be okay after. Diba? So we closed it. So I was in denial. I was just here in, at home doing a lot of stuff, nagluluto, you know, the usual, diba? Um, Facebook, Netflix, and all. Then after a while, I realized that this is not going away. Then I started to, you know, parang form problems in my head na, oh my God, what will happen to me? What will happen to the business? What am I gonna do? And things like that. So medyo, I somehow had that moment where I had to reflect um, where, are, where am I heading as a person? Where is my business heading to after this? Or while well, this is still going on? And luckily, Hakbang came as an answer to that. Because uh, my friend in Switzerland, um, si Rhea, she's my childhood friend. She was actually asking me, kumusta naman ka and all that. And she said, um, you know, I, said, I attended this hackathon. So maybe you want to do something like that in the Philippines. And I, I looked at the website of what she went, uh, she experienced there in Switzerland. And I saw na pwede naman. So I said, why not do this? So sabi niya, sige, let's do that. So, and then we invited friends it's like Jerome. I invited him from Davao, our friends in Butuan, in Manila. And then we created Hakbang. So that was our way of coping also because we realized that, you know, we don't have to stay here and be problematic all the time and wonder what's going to happen and to us and to the world. We can actually do something about it. So that's our parang response to this pandemic. And hopefully it will also inspire other people to create this uh, environment where we can, you know, uh, help others. Yun naman sa akin. Yeah. Thank you very much, Owen. How about you, Jerome? Were you in denial also at first when this whole pandemic thing happened? Um, actually, at first, um, it was really so sad, you know, na nawalan, yung, nawalan ng events yung life industry dito sa Davao. The weddings, uh, the spinners, the hosts, the event organizer, the event planners, yung makeup artists, and everything. Medyo sad. Pero one good thing is, uh, I'm connected with Concentrics for eight years now. So medyo, medyo may income-income pa ako nun. Pero alam mo, yung iba pa rin yung mamimiss mo yung passion mo. So during the pandemic period, um, I get to work at home, so work from home ako since March until now. So nandito ako sa bahay. And then, sabi ko, namimiss ko talaga mag, mag, ano, mag, tag nito magtrabaho, maghawak ng mikropono, mag-arrange ng program, mag, mag hi hello sa crowd sa mall and everything. So, ang ginawa ko since, um, a social media influencer, um, I get to inspire people ju- uh, sa mga YouTube videos ko and everything. And then luckily, uh, brands are coming in. So 51 Talk asked me to, um, you know, um, what you call this, endorse them. So they get to pay me. Um, Food Panda get to uh, ask me to work with them. So medyo may kita doon sa, ano, sa, sa social media site na uh, I get to endorse brands. So aside from that, uh, during pandemic, um, na-post ko din to. Yung parang, it was just a form of a joke. Gum- gumawa ako ng video na parang, I'm up for online event, yung parang ganon. So sabi ng friends ko, possible ba din mag-online event ang wedding? Possible ba din mag-online event ng ganito ganyan? Tapos Owen came in, sabi ni Jerome, are you up for the challenge for online event? Tsada lagi na, kanang gwapo lagi na. Eh kung sige, sige, go, go join me in. Anana. Kasi nag-bet kami ni Owen dito sa Davao when I hosted the, uh, I think two two or three days Honda event yun dito Davao when, right? Three Tapos days. Uh, three, three days. Tapos ayun, sabi ko, sige, go join me. So that was the hakbang all about pala. And then ayun sabi ko sige can we join with uh, I would like to join this hakbang. So ana si nasa isip ko lang before what's okay I'm joining here as a host pero um within the long run of period hindi lang pala ako host parang I get to experience a lot of skills I get to learn a lot of um things na kaya ko palang gawin like I can use Streamyard just like this to host an event and whatnot. and we, um with that we were able to work internationally 
So from uh-huh. the time we did the Hakbang Three Day Hackathon here in Davao, that was the first ever hackathon in Mindanao made for Mindanaoans. Um, a lot of people seeing uh, us, you know, as a bank team, don sa Switzerland, si bang bansa, so they get to see us. So we were, we were able to get to work with them. And then the time we worked with them, parang they said na parang uh, we were able to pull it off. That's why they hired us again. And up until the succeeding months, we, we will be working with them. So parang medyo okay yung virtual event din. So hindi ko naman din hinaya yung sarili kung mawala na ako ng trabaho. And in order for me to still continue my passion as hosting. Galing. Kasi, uh, you know what, after the Hakbang event that you have had, I've noticed that I have also friends from Manila who followed and had the same type of format as you did. So, you see, parang talagang trailblazers yung dating ninyo, no? That, that you started something, this event in the online industry, no? even in the event side, kahit hindi live. So, it, it's really remarkable what you guys have done, no? Uh, I'm just interested now, um, was it easy for you to transition in terms of, you know, live events to social media? Because I'm sure that uh, uh, Jerome was mentioning earlier that you're also a social media influencer and YouTuber. No? So was it was there a difficulty in terms of having events in the live format to social media? Um, for me, sa social media, kasi dito bif- sa akin, what I'm using was like, posting uh, brands in Instagram, posting my own YouTube vlog. So medyo hindi ako takot nun kasi I'm just, you know, filming myself alone. Now, regarding to transitioning to online event, medyo a bit scary kasi alam mo, alam, di natin alam mo, mawala lang kuryente, mawala lang internet, yeah. mawala lang internet and whatnot. So yun yung mga possibilities na ina-avoid namin na awin yung mangyari. And then we really ano, study na kung anong oras kami magla-live and then we need to make sure na wala talaga mga power interruption, internet interruption para smooth yung aming transition. In, in terms of time management, um, kung sa event life industry ka talaga, you know your time. Pero dito sa, ano, dito sa virtual event, you need to meet one hour before the time because you need to make sure that the light is good, your audio is good, your internet speed is good. So there are a lot of things to consider before you go on live sa any platforms man, sa StreamYard, sa Facebook, Sa, sa, sa YouTube or everything. So, medyo hindi siya madaling transition, pero as we go along, we were able to, ano, we were able to tell ourselves, eh, kaya mo naman ay mag, ano, mag virtual, virtual event. So, sana naging virtual na lang lahat. <laughs> yung ganun. Pero, <laughs> we miss pa din natin yung, ano, yung, in, you know, engagement ng lahat ng tao. Kung sa wedding, sa debut, sa mall, sa mall shows, sa concert, nami miss ko talaga yun sobra. Yeah. How about you, Owen? Uh, I'm sure that you have uh, a lot of Friends working in the events industry. Um, ka- kayong dalawa siguro ni Jerome was not uh, did not have much of a difficulty because you're into social media even before the pandemic. But in the other members of the events industry, was it easy for them to transition to live events to online? Um, most of them are still not into digital events. Um, I have friends who stick with on um you know, on ground events live events so uh, makeup artists for example or those who are into weddings of course they have to cuz now it's somehow allowed so they're kind of okay but at first they were really having a hard time In the first 2 to 3 months it was really hard because no events were allowed kasi diba the events is the industry is the last to be released back mm-hmm. into the normal uh environment so at that on, on those times um i i am well, well i was so amazed with their, I don't know, they're very quick on their feet. Na they, they did online selling, na maligyan na mga, mga pagkaon, di ba, gulay, mga yana. But I, I am, I'm very, I know, I'm very appreciative of that because they knew na, okay, ipark mo na ang passion, but we have to have profit in order to survive. So they were able to really, you know, be very quick on their feet na, okay, unsa may natong pwede ma, 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 mabuhat. So that was what they did. As for me, kaya nga, di ba, I was still in denial. So wala, I did not do anything. That was the difference at first. And then I realized na, okay, um, I have to do something now. But sila, they were very quick. Uh, and uh, because I only realized that my savings were already being eaten by my spending, that's the time that I was already tar- starting to get m- more worried about the situation. Um, mm-hmm. yun. But yes, at for me, I was also having a hard time transitioning kasi I am also very... Uh, used to live events now i can see people no and then and the first few um live events namo i mean digital events i easily get drained 
Mm. I get trained because uh, I have, parang I have to double my effort because I feel like how can the people appreciate what I'm doing na I'm on the other side of a screen, diba? So parang yun yung effect sa akin. But eventually, when we do meetings, when we do a lot of events, I already started to get more comfortable with this medium. And I now can, you know, do stuff that I know can actually be translated into something that they will uh, parang ano, understand or appreciate. So medyo dili na kayo siya as draining um, energy-wise. Right. I'm, I'm really amazed, but I'm struck by the innovativeness of the members of the events industry, diba? Uh, at first, denial, and then eventually, boom, no? There's, there's, they saw an opportunity out of a challenge, no? Which is, I'm very, very happy that you guys are really, uh, were able to bounce back to that event, mm -hmm. no? We have here a comment from our live audience. Um, we were interested. We are interested to know uh, what are the lessons that you have learned from this situation of the pandemic, you no, know, as members of the events industry, or perhaps in life in general, and any advice or motivation for the other members of the events industry. Uh, I'd like to go first. Um, what yeah, are the go. lessons you have learned for this situation? Um, one thing, talaga ang pinaka na learn ko dito, and I really wanted to share this to a lot of my um you know friends who's working in the industry that we might need really to re reevaluate ourselves uh the spendings so uh, hindi natin kailangan isipin na ah, alam ko may mga ano pa may mga gig pa so alam mo yun so kailangan din natin mag-ipon financial wise you need really to keep something for yourself for emergency dito 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 tama magsalig ng ina pa ko upcoming event so I, I i can spend more now and then i can just you know get the money after na roll yung mga events ko yung ganun and then any advice or motivation ang advice ko lang is uh, make yourself productive um wag niyo hilain yung sarili niyo wala na ko events kanang kuan na kaayo kanang pait na kaayo kanang dili na ko na makita karon kay ano a lot of people are going out sa mall buying stuff na nahurot na mga nahurot online shopping, Lazada, nahurot ang mga TV diri sa mga diri sa Dama because a lot of people are buying TVs as appliances. So that's really okay because that's how you transition your your sadness towards being productive, you know, alam mo yun. Tapos, um, aside ko din, aside dyan, meron kasi sa Dama kasi I think that was yesterday or just today na implement na lahat ng mga hosts, uh, makeup artists, lahat ng mga freelance coordinators, on-the-day coordinators ay kailangan ng magkaroon ng business permit in order for, for them to run a certain event. So that was the most palang challenging part dito sa Davao ngayon. So ang advice ko lang dito, since this is really implemented, uh, we might really need to secure these things and follow these requirements. Kasi if we don't have this and we we are, at yung parang stop natin sila na parang, ah, dilip mi ano eh. Tayo din kasi yung kawawa if we were not. So if you really wanted to live and then, you know, um, place a food sa table ng ating family and, you know, spend time sa ating self, alam mo naman, each of us have have mga dreams to come and ang gusto nating maabot gusto nating mabili so if you really guys wanted to get these things and reach your dreams um elevate challenge yourself reevaluate yourself every day and then as you go alam, alam mo na maaatawa ah, dito na kailangan gud dito kasi kapag parang alay wala parang wala lang gud dito pakialam parang murag ay ugma na lang ang trabaho ay ugma na lang ni parang walang mangyayari so know your worth as well as a, as an individual as an, as an event ano freelance worker yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Jerome. Those are those were fantastic points. How about you, Owen? Okay, so based on my experience, um, what I've learned is that I had to step back um, because after from denying it, I have to step back and see like what Jerome said, no, reevaluate. What I did was like step back and see what are the things that I can do right now to help myself in this situation and what are the things that I need to do in order for me to move forward. Because if you just move forward without assessing what you have, there is a tendency that you might, uh, you know, fall short from your expectations. So what I did is I I step back and say, okay, these are the things that I have right now. These are my resources, financially, my physical, mental, and talent-wise resources, and these are the things that I have now. So from from here on, what will I do? Because if we keep on holding on to, ah, okay, because balik na naman yung mga events industry, okay lang yan, which we are still hopeful na it will go back no but um parang malayo pa so as of the moment what you can do is try to look at what you have right now and what you can do with what you have so that's what i did and then um advice is that you have to learn new things you have to accept change and be open you have to have an open mindset no na um 
we cannot refuse change and we have we cannot refuse learning kasi uh, sabi na okay naman ko ani um kami mm-hmm. sa we had to also do that no we have to learn a lot of things aside from streamyard we do um, uh, digital workspaces we collaborate on online which is very different from what we do before so at first it was a struggle and then now it's very easy um nobody started uh, as a master diba in anything even talking we started as babies without any skill of talking or walking we learned it through time so we i just hope that my, our friends from the event industry will also see that uh, it's time for them to re- learn new things and learn a lot of things and relearn things that are still useful now right, right. Uh, those 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 questions uh, those answers are fantastic no when uh, i i asked that particular question because you know even us in chakra yoga studio where we're part of the fitness industry and i i feel that this particular concern of you know shifting from live events to to online is not really unique to the events industry, but to most of us, not even in the fitness industry. And you know, as a teacher, I can definitely uh, can uh, resonate with oh, when 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 niya kaganina na isud yun kanang magyaw yaw bitaw sa sa kanang zoom no. Kaya ka nang madrain yun, no? madrain yun ang imong energy, even uh, most likely pag naay ka ng mga online activities such as this. So my mm-hmm. question to you guys now is, uh, uh, and a question of the viewer as well, uh, how do you handle the so-called digital fatigue, di ba? Kaya di ba taas man atong mga meetings, but actually mas taas pa gani tungod kay na online na atong mga meetings, no? Mm-hmm. And... Uh, do you have some self-care tips that you would want to share our audience uh, who are watching right now? Maybe we could start with Owen first. Okay. Um, I used to have digital fatigue. It is real, no? It's real. I I, I felt that myself. Na I had to parang make myself present in this digital space. Na kailangan ko always attentive and all that. And then na, na drain ko ana because I'm not used to this kind of situation. And then. Um, lahi ang verbal cues when you are in a digital space because I'm sure there's an, uh, a, a few se- millisecond delay between my reaction to your reaction. And it's really different when you see a person in front of you than a person in front of your screen. So at first, ang akong ginabuhat, what I do is I, I make sure that I have time to really close my eyes and remove myself away from the, from the computer, the laptop, and, you know, uh, spend it elsewhere relax my mind and my my body and my eyes and then um what i do also is prior to doing meetings is i i drink a lot of water i i, I walk I, I walk from here to my kitchen ana lang gud kanang gamay lang apar dili lang kagalingkod all the time because it's kind of ano siya mo na baya imong buhaton gud maglingkod na ka for kami ni Jerome we do meetings like what i'm not sure with Jerome with this work pa gud no um ako i i have like min- minimum of 6 hours of screen time so that's a lot of screen time. So mm-hmm. ano kaya siya? Draining siya. So and then what I do is when I do, when I stop already when I say I decide na I'm already done with work, I will not go back to the screen anymore and leave and go to my room. So una, if you notice my background takbang was my bedroom. I really yeah. have to move it because uh dili na ako separate akong workspace and my rest space. So I have to really physically separate it. Ano? Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Owen. How about you, Jerome? Uh, how um, did you handle the so-called uh, digital fatigue and other self-care tips that you can add? Ako naman, um, for me, digital di- digital fatigue is already there kasi baka social media ako eh, so gadgets yeah. is there already. Um, it's more on like um, handling your time management. So so work, I get to work like, like let's say like nine hours, including one hour uh, one hour break. So that's like, Eight hours screen time with three monitors here sa bahay, plus the meeting of hakbang. So that's really, really a lot of screenplay. Alam yun, like, yung screen time mo doon parang always there. So self care tips ko if we do events like this, uh, we make sure that we we look presentable. As uh, ito nga si Owen nagsusuot drang sa patos kasi hindi nakikita yung sa patos sa screen. So ganon si Owen mag ano? Ako naman. Um, okay na ako sa top ko like I need to prepare myself. I need to look good. I need to make sure that my hair is there. Uh, my, my lights are good, the audio is good. So self-care tips done is time management. If there are time na alam mong hindi mo naman kailangan talaga magbabad sa, sa, ano, sa computer or sa, sa, sa laptop, take a rest, take a nap, take vitamins, 
ayun, uh, drink more water talaga kasi dito sa Zoom, dito sa StreamYard, ang labanan dito is dadaan. If wala kang water sa iyo, ma-drain ka talaga. Alam mo 'yun? And it really it's the handle time. So if you feel like you're really sleepy, you go ahead and sleep. And if you feel like you're ready to go and you you can go ahead and start your work, you do your work. Um it's going to be your time of eating, your work, your rest, and then do the cycle all over. Wag yung parang I need, finish, yeah, I need to finish this for 24 hours so that I can I can rest for 2 days. Parang na that that's not going to work because your your the result of your work will not be as much as quality wise parang walang ganun so it's really time management yeah now correct me if i'm wrong no my perception of being part of the event industry is that it's such a very busy hectic or very dynamic no um given this no how do you still find time for your own place of sanity or even silence no because parang parang sunod sunod yung projects niyo eh tapos Considering that now it's online, parang I I cannot imagine how your life, you no, know, the two of you can be so hectic. So how do you balance your personal and perhaps your work life? Uh, perhaps let's start with Jerome first. Okay, ako naman iba iba yung iba din yung timbre ng ano ko, yung self care ko, yung parang um me time ko. So kapag kasi sa akin wala kaming trabaho ng ano, Saturday Sunday, pero may trabaho ako sa regular work ko dito sa bahay. Ginagawa ko kapag rest day ko, I get to go out, I, I need to eat, I need to pamper myself. If there is thing na gusto kong bilhin, binibili ko na sa agad. Yung parang I need to reward myself. Parang 24 hours ko ng trabaho niya. Ako ay reward sa really grabe po na oy, marag mabayad na lang tanan sa internet, mabayad na lang tanan sa kuryente, sa tubig, what man kay maimo, grabe na po. So, rewarding yourself is I think the most remarkable way of really uplifting and motivating yourself to do more. Yung para bang, para kanino ka bumabangon, Jerome? O para kuan, para sa kuryente. Uy, grabe po na pangit, man gaya na paminawan. So, para kanino ka bumabangon? So, para kanino ka bumabangon before? Para sa ring light, para gwapo akong light. So, ganun. So, I need to really, like, motivate myself para lang mapush yung, ano ko, yung mga gusto ko. Tapos, if, if ever man na, if ever man that you dream of something na medyo di pa makaya, that's how you challenge yourself, that you need to do more. Mm-hmm. Alam mo yun. So that's for me. Sige, uh, yeah. I have just an addition to Owen. No? I wanted to also check, aside from how do you balance your uh, personal and uh, work life, I also wanted to know, since uh, Jerome already mentioned this, uh, where do you get your inspiration and perhaps your motivation in doing things? Okay. Sige, <laughs> first question. Um, what I do kasi, I'm very conscious with my time. I'm very conscious with how I use my time. Um, so, I wake up very early. Kaya nga si Jerome, wala pa siya natapos sa work, mata na ko. And nag- good morning na me at 4, at 5 in the morning. Like, Hoy, mata na, mata na ka, or wala pa ka natulog ako. Mata na ko. So, I wake up very early, and then I start feeding my dogs and everything. And then I, I clean up their mess outside. And then after that, I play, like, for example, morning music na meditation. That's how I try to calm my mind. And then... Um, Ano siya? And then I, I go visit my plants and see, uh, oh, kumusta naman mo diha? No? Are you still alive? And then after that, I start my breakfast and all that. Um, what I do kasi, um, I plan my day a day ahead. So yes, I, I, yesterday, I already know what I'm doing today so that I know how to use my time. And then so like after this, I have my relaxing time. So um, I know that I'll be going out, I'll be spending it with a friend. So I'm going out after. So ako na na siyang naano. So that I will know nga, dili ko mag-panic na, oh God, busy na kayo ko. And in the events industry, it's very important to really know how to use your time well. Uh, you don't have to be busy, you have to be productive. You know? yeah. um, so yun. So um, that, cause, cause sometimes when you're busy, ma-stress ma- ka sa anxiety. So what I do is I try to see like okay like kami ni Jerome are very into the Google Calendar now. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I look at my calendar a day before like okay tomorrow this is my day. So asa na ako pwede masingit I can go out and buy avocado for example. So mga ganyan or di ba? So and then um on weekends we don't have work cuz regular naman yung hakbang. On weekends I, I try as, as much as possible to go out safely. And and you know breathe real air. Ana gani nga dili lang kaning humid air diri sa akong room and my my house but something elsewhere ana siya or I, I i read a book or i watch tiktok ngana so <laughs> those are the things that i do para ma-relax and second is the energy that i gain now um because i live alone and my parents are no longer here and my family i mean my siblings they're okay with their lives i i see myself i, I even said this to my friend you know nga they don't also have children 
na maybe we were born not to have children but to take care of other people in the process and make our lives more meaningful for others. So, ingana siya. So, I wake up knowing that I have people to help, people to create impact for them ba. Ana siya. So, that's how I get my energy from. Uh, can I just say that um, you guys are, the two of you are very inspirational. No? I, I really learned a lot in this, uh, uh, in this chat. No? Um, and uh, that particular idea that Owen mentioned about you know, managing their, his time and his energy is actually uh, one of the things that we've talked about in the previous episodes of Chakra Chat where, where a YouTuber mentioned um, that there's really no uh, balancing of time here. It's really about balancing your energy, right? Because you have very limited energy. So how will you make your energy be more productive for the things that matter for you, right? So yeah, I'm very happy with the, with, with your responses and with our conversation for today. Thank you very much, uh, Jerome and Oleko. Thank you. Know, so for our second part, the last part of our conversation, we will be doing a fast talk. You know? So okay. I will be giving you uh, a stem, and then you just need to complete the stem to make it a sentence that's uh, meaningful for you. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's start. Let's start. Okay, events for me is, let's start with Jerome. Events for me is? Events for me is life. Life. How about you, Owen? Events for me is finding my purpose. Mm, finding your purpose. Okay, let's start now with Owen. My dream event is? My dream event is uh, 30,000 people invite, uh, you know, attending our digital event. Wow. Like increase ko Jerome, 23,000 pa to. 30 na ka How about you, Jerome? My dream event is? My dream event is to host Mutya ng uh, Davao or Miss Philippines. Yeah, wow. Sige. Uh, let's start with Jerome now. From all the events that I did before, my favorite is, and perhaps you can say a short description of that event. Okay. Um, when I hosted the Vice Candace concert in Davao City, that was really the big blast. I gained a lot of uh, YouTube followers and subscribers when I did that. I get to able to meet a lot of artists. And from there, um, the, um, what you call this, Wilbros Philippines um, put their trust on me. So if they have event in this if, event that will happen in Davao City, they'll get to hire me every time. Wow. How about you, Owen? From all the events I did before, my favorite is? Miss Cagayan, 2012. When I directed it, because that was my entry point to Cagayan de Oro. I was very new here. 2009, kasi I transferred here. I was a, an admin for Liceo University. I was a manager of Rodelsa Hall. And I was uh, a, a theater practitioner and a teacher. But nobody knew that I was a director before in Butuan. So it was the entry of my um, directorial debut here in Cagayan de Oro. So, Miss Cagayan, 2012. Wow, thank you. So yeah, uh, let's now start with Owen. I would like to organize an event for? I would like to organize an event for Beyonce. Ah. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> How about you? Sure it will reach 30,000. <laughs> uh, I would like to organize um, an event for digital graduation. Wow. Yeah. Sige. Now let's go to Jerome first. My biggest fear in doing an event is um, stuttering. Ha, huh? talaga? Na <laughs> fear mo pa rin 'yon? Oo, kasi ang one thing I learned with this artist na nakakatrabaho ko, uh, sila Beauty Gonzales and everything. Um mm -hmm. isa sa isa sa natutunan ko before sa kanila was like, kabahan ka nang hindi ka kinakabahan sa stage. Kasi kapag hindi ka kinakabahan, you feel like you can you can do everything. Pero ako kinakabahan pa rin ako kasi sa sa natutunan ko din sa isang host sa Davao, isa sa mga inspiration ko si Rex Del Rosario. Sa event industry kasi, sa hosting, there's no rewind. Like nagkamali ka, okay, rewind. So it should be a smooth hosting kung nasa stage. So wala kasi uh, take two, walang ganun eh. It should be straightforward, smooth and concise. So yun yung iniiwasan ko, wala akong idle moment, stuttering, gusto ko pulido, tsaka hype yung energy ko always. Hey, good. How about you, Owen? My biggest um, fear in doing an event. Fear. Correct to Jerome. My biggest fear is when I'm not afraid. So when there's an event and I'm so confident, I started to worry. I start to worry. Now, why am I not afraid? 
because sometimes when you're too confident something's gonna happen yun yung yun yung experience ko always so when i'm when i'm not afraid when i'm going because for me a little bit of fear is okay because it makes you look for excellence makes you makes you look for perfection because if you feel like okay perfect na lahat actually it's not so when an event comes and i'm still not worried i have to go back and say why am i feeling this way why am i too confident i have to check everything checklist baka merong hindi ko na prepare ganyan okay so yeah, now let's start with owen uh, the last one okay. if there is something else that i would wish to aspire what would that be if there's something that i wish to aspire is that people will remember me as a person who have helped them um create their own name in the industry hey how about you jerome um can you repeat the sentence again <laughs> uh if there is something else that i would want i would wish to aspire that would be if there is something that i would wish to aspire is that people will remember me as an event host um spreading motivation every day positive vibes and um, helping them towards their emotional needs and a little bit of their financial needs wow thank you very much again once again jerome and owen it has been a, a great thank pleasure you to have so, both of you. Uh, perhaps we can invite uh, some of our viewers right now uh, where can we catch you what are the things that na aabangan namin sa inyong dalawa Okay, go to Jerome. You first. Okay, uh, for me, naman, uh, you guys can catch me uh, on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, Jerome Raisano, Davao Host Ambassador. Um, I also have my official Facebook fan page, Jerome Raisano. You can also follow me on my Instagram, Jerome Raisano, and on my Twitter, Jerome Ray J. Sano. And of course, um, for more updates, you call us Hakbang Wen. And of course, if you guys uh, wanted to have some tips for hosting, digital networking, uh, you can always contact me. Just uh, look for the name Jerome Rehami Sonsani on Facebook and we can, uh, you know, talk about that. And of course, for Hakbang updates, it's going to be okay. Yes. Um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to also promote. So um, Hakbang is the, Hakbang Pilipinas is a digital platform that we are also creating now. Um, and aside from hackathons, we do um, digital events, we do consultancy, and we do uh, digital marketing. So um, we have every Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 5.30 to 6.30. We have also our live stream. It's called COVID Conversations Over Coffee, where we discuss anything COVID-related and how people are coping, like what we are doing right now. So we are very happy that we're, we were also part of this uh, Chakra Chat. And second is that um, we will also have... Um, we have upcoming events. It's called um, Global Teal um, Meetup. So if you are uh, a business owner, a thought leader, or a student of management or business and or entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, um, you can also join us September 10. This is going to be an, an international event and it's for free from nine o'clock in the evening until 11 because we have to accommodate the European and American time. So it's nine to 11 in the evening. So also comfortable for us because if you have work in the morning or you have... Uh, classes, pwede ka maka-join in the uh, evening. And then uh, you will be meeting a lot of CEOs, uh, mga business leaders, and you will, they will be talking about a management principle called TEAL. So if you want to know more about that, you can visit tealaroundtheworld.com, T-E-A-L, the caller, TEAL, and then uh, you will join us. You will see us there in the event, September 10. And also follow me on my official Facebook page, Owen Hein. Okay. So you have there uh, Jerome and Owen, and like us, how we always end our chakra chat sessions. We place our uh, hands in prayer position, and I know then we bow to each other, and we say Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much, Owen and Jerome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.